Among general anesthesia induction drugs, etomidate is the only imidazole and it has the most favorable therapeutic index for single bolus administration. It also produces a unique toxicity among anesthetic drugs, that is, inhibition of adrenal steroid synthesis that far outlast its hypnotic action and that may reduce survival of critically ill patients. Ethomidate was introduced into clinical practice in 1972 and initial reports of its use in humans emerged in the clinical literature soon afterward. Academic publications focusing on etomidate rose steadily until 1983 when the number of reports rapidly doubled following discovery of each adrenal toxicity. Subsequently, the number of yearly published papers focusing on etomidate diminished, apparently in parallel with its use in operating rooms, but this rate has researched in the last decade, renewed interest in etomidate parallels, its widening use during intubations in emergency rooms and intensive care units, as well as new concerns about the impact of etomidate induced adrenal toxicity in critically ill patients. Now, etomidate does not inhibit sympathetic tone or myocardial function, and at typical anesthetic induction doses, etomidate produces minimal blood pressure and heart rate changes in patients, including those with valvular or ischemic heart disease. For the same reason, etomidate does not block sympathetic responses to laryngoscopy and intubation, and these are often blunted by pre-medication with opioids. Etomidate produces less apnea than barbiturates or propofol, no histamine release, and very rare allergic reactions. Because of its remarkably benign hemodynamic effects, etomidate has proven useful for general anesthetic induction in patients undergoing cardiac surgery and those with poor cardiac function. Etomidate also provides advantages for induction of anesthesia in the setting of hemorrhagic shock and as a result of its favorable profile for anesthetic induction in a variety of critically ill patients, etomidate has been adopted by many emergency medicine physicians as the hypnotic drug of choice for rapid sequence induction and intubation. Cerebral blood flow is reduced along with cerebral metabolic rate and intracranial pressure, while cerebral perfusion pressure is maintained or increased during etomidate induced anesthesia. In healthy patients, etomidate is approximately 75% protein bound, and etomidate is characterized by a large central volume of distribution due to its high solubility in fat. Etomidate metabolism depends on hepatic esterase activity which hydrolyzes the drug to a carboxylic acid and an ethanol leaving group. The carboxylate metabolite is excreted mostly in urine and to a lesser degree in bile. The pharmacokinetic parameters for etomidate indicate its suitability for use as a continuous infusion with a context-sensitive half-time shorter than that of propofol. Prolonged etomidate infusion for anesthesia and sedation was practiced during the first decade of clinical availability. However, adrenal toxicity preclude this application. Intravenous bolus of 0.2 to 0.4 mg per kg body weight provided the hypnosis for 5 to 10 minutes. Following a bolus, 
Maintenance of general anesthesia can be achieved by continuous infusion of etomidate at 30 to 100 microgram per kg per minute. Oral transmucosal etomidate has been used to induce sedation and rectal administration has been used to induce general anesthesia in pediatric patients. Now, several unfavorable side effects associated with etomidate were noted in early studies, including pain on injection, myoclonic movements during induction of general anesthesia. Pain on injection was found to be worse with etomidate in aqueous solutions in comparison to the formulation in 35% propylene glycol. Myoclonus has been shown to increase with etomidate dose and can be attenuated by split dose induction or premedication with benzos, thiopental or dexmeridomidine or opioids. Post-operative nausea and vomiting is cited as a frequent side effect of etomidate, but very few studies have formally compared post-operative nausea and vomiting following etomidate versus other agents used for induction of general anesthesia. Adrenal cortical inhibition by etomidate has received a great deal of attention and significantly limits each use as both an anesthetic and sedative. Nonetheless, the effect of etomidate on clinical outcomes has never been carefully studied in large number of surgical or intensive care patients. The clinical community reacted to revelations about adrenal toxicity by seizing the use of etomidate for long-term infusions. Some editorials recommended halting its use altogether, while others suggested that etomidate had value as a single-dose induction drug for selected patients. The drug package insert was amended to state that etomidate usage is approved for induction of general anesthesia and anesthetic maintenance for short operative procedures. It specifically warns against administration by prolonged infusion. Recently, concern about etomidate-induced adrenal toxicity in critically ill patients and the use of corticosteroids to treat this effect has re-emerged.